Hey everybody, and welcome back to a very different episode of Ellie Knows Rocks. Today I am sitting on a couch. <laughs> no, actually, I am participating in a heart for rocks. It's a collaboration through different rock hounds over YouTube. And the one big thing we have in common is A, we're all women, and B, we all love collecting rocks. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story of why I became a geologist and why I love rock hounding so, so much. While I do this, I'm going to be bouncing back and forth to show you me wrapping some stones for the Heart of Rocks wreath that will be auctioned off sometime later this month, I believe. But thank you all so much for joining me on this mini adventure. And let's go see what we learn. This is my lovely view of my backyard, and this is where I'm sitting today. So how did I get into geology? That is one of the biggest and most popular questions that I'm asked. And it all started when I was like seven, eight years old, and I would go find agates on the beach with my dad. I didn't know what an agate was. I just thought they were a beautiful, pretty rock, and I wanted to go find them all the time. I loved how many colors they came in. I loved being able to collect them. I loved being able to grow my collection. And I had no idea how cool they were until I got a little older to try to figure out the chemical composition and stuff like that, becoming a geologist. So I decided to go to college to become a geologist when I was working at a very, very horrible job for a bank. I couldn't stand it. The, the management there was just, ugh. The people there, the actual, my coworkers were awesome. And some of them were a little, mm, you know, you could definitely deal without them. But for the most part, the core people there were amazing. And I met one of my good friends there after I kind of stole her job. It's a really long story. Me and my friends have really, really extreme pasts where either it's like a trauma bond, something tragic, something that you would have never assumed would have happened in order for us to become best friends. But I'm still good friends with her today and I love her to death. Anyways, I couldn't stand working there at all. Okay, this hair has to go, it's driving me insane. I thought I was trying to be cute with my little hair. It's not, it's not working out for this side today because the winds go in this direction. Anyways, as I was working there, I just realized I couldn't stand it anymore and that's not where I wanted to spend my time and my passions. So I decided to go talk to one of the counselors at the community college and I said, listen, I want to go to school. I don't know what to do. I don't know what trajectory I need, but I think that I want to be a geologist because I went hunting for opals and I think that that's something that I could do for the rest of my life. And they just looked at me like, huh? You want to what? For what? Basically, they, they kind of believed me, but they didn't all at the same time. Oh my gosh, okay, this one's got to go too. Sorry. No, no more cute little hair. Anyways, I, they wanted to meet with me in person because I had signed up. I'd paid for classes. I signed up to go to school. This was the very first time I was actually going to college. You know, I have my high school diploma, not a problem. I'd worked multiple, multiple, multiple jobs. I have a CV that is as longer than my arm. And I, <laughs> I went in there and I was in my bank attire and I looked nice. I had on my suit and my heels and I was like, listen, I signed up for uh, X amount of credits. Uh, I signed up for 21 credits. And they're like, well, most first time students don't do that. I said, well, I'm not normal and I really want to do this. And the woman kind of laughed at me and she said, well, we have to go talk to the dean. And I was like, oh no, I'm in trouble. So I went and I talked to the dean of the college and <laughs> he's like, well, you seem professional. I mean, I was dressed professionally. I was speaking as professional as I possibly could. Granted, I don't have a college education at this time. I just street smarts, doing what I did, working at a bank, you had to be as professional as possible. So he's like, well, you're signing for yourself that you're going to complete all of these without failing. And I was like, uh-huh, I can do it. And I was confident, I told him I could. So it was definitely the, one of the hardest things that I chose to do. Uh, 
in retrospect, 21 credits was probably a really stupid thing to sign up for for my very, very first semester of college. But nevertheless, I did get through it and it was awesome. But first semester went off without a hitch, right? My second semester um, started after summer, so it was fall semester. I also took a summer class as well. But fall semester is where it got really dicey. I got to start doing like a lot more stuff. So I did have a first geology class that first semester. It was awesome. Uh, I will never forget Len, my professor. Len was awesome, and uh, he taught me a lot. And it was absolutely amazing to learn so many things from him because I was just that new sponge that wanted to know everything there was to know about geology. So I go on, and I... I start talking to a professor and what was going to be my advisor at the University of Nevada, Reno. And I went in, I was like, hey, this is what I'm doing at this college. I'm just refining and making sure that I'm taking the right classes that are going to transfer over here. And I had already done this. I had already made sure that any of the classes I was taking was going to transfer to the university if I got accepted. So I was all excited about that. but. Uh, I kept getting deterred. I kept having teachers say, you know, you're going into like a really, really, really hard degree. I was like, yeah, it's okay. They're like, so how good at math are you? I was like, I don't know. I worked at a bank. They're like, mm, we're not talking about that. And they're like, you have to go all the way through calculus too. And I was like, huh? And they're like, yeah, but you know, you, you got to study really hard. You got to do all these things. So I was bound and determined to like get through any of it. I think math starting out scared me because I wasn't always strong with that as a kid and even through call or high school it was like ugh I don't I hate this subject it sucked to me it wasn't intuitive it was you know a lot of theorized stuff but there was always just one right answer so like math is actually really amazing and so I learned that later on in college, but at first off, I was like, well, yeah, sure, <laughs> I'm going to try here because I really, really, really want to know about rocks. And I kind of got laughed at, but and I was taken seriously by a couple people. I, I had a lot of people that were on my side, but the next semester at the community college was kind of tough for me because I had to go into, it was a chemistry class, and it was intermediate college chemistry. And I'd never taken a chemistry class before. So I fudged a little bit and I said, yeah, sure. I've taken chemistry, not at this college, but I've taken chemistry, not a problem. And I think that they could tell, yeah, sure. You know, she seems like an adult because I was an unconventional student. I was older than everybody else. And I asked one of my other teachers that I'd had to vouch for me that I could actually do this and that, you know, it was going to be something that wasn't going to get me into any trouble and I could totally pass the class. Little did I know how much I doubted myself, but I kept telling myself, I can do this, I can do this, just move forward and do it. So, this is one of my favorite stories about this community college. So, we had, was it, it was three days of class and two days of lab. This was a five-day class. Like every single day that I was in college, I was going to this class. And lab was a three-hour lab, lecture was an hour. So I went into my very first lab, and I sit at kind of one, two, the third table from the, from the front door, and it was kind of this like uh, semicircle type area where all these desks were out. I guess if you're plan view, you're looking at it downwards. All the desks were very long. And three students could sit on one side, three students could sit on the other side, and you had your own little individual drawers for all of the chemistry stuff you would be using. And our professor said, okay, you've chosen the seat that you're going to sit in for the rest of the semester. And I was like, oh, I hope I have a good one. And I was, you know, right up front. I was always up front in my classes. I always wanted to see things and know it and, and learn it and, and not be distracted by anything. So I'm sitting there, I'm all excited, I have my book, and I remember I was wearing a very tight-fitting, kind of low-cut, well, kind of like the, the shirt I have on, but not a tank top, little short sleeves. It was 
fairly bright pink and I had a pair of like cut off jean shorts on because it was in August when all of this started for that class. And I remember sitting there and I'm super excited. The teacher says, okay, you guys need to pick your lab partners. And he said, you're gonna have two chances to pick lab partners. You get this first time to kind of test everything out. And then a second time, if you wanna add more lab partners to your group or kick people out of your group, basically. So I was sitting at a single seat and at the table I was at, the third one in from the front door, there were two other boys over here to my left and they were sitting closer to the wall. And there was a chair in between us here and then another chair over there with nobody right directly in front of me. So I hear all this talk of everybody choosing lab partners and whatnot. So I look over to the guys and I was like, hey, I said, can I, you know, since we're all at the same table, could I be a lab partner, a third lab partner? They're like, no, actually that's okay. And so I go up to the second table that was almost full, but I could have squeezed in because you could fit six people at a table and there was a six feet open. And I said, can I join your lab? And they're like, yeah, no, we're, we're good with the five of us. And I go up to the front table, which had a full six, six people. But I was like, well, I got to ask. And I was like, hey, does anybody want to be my lab partner? And I went around to every table and total they were probably, there was nine or 10 lab tables. And I went to every single one of them asking if I could join in and they're like, yeah, no, no, we're good. So I didn't know anybody in the college, of course, especially in my intermediate chemistry class, which nobody wanted to take unless you had a science degree or all of the other nerds or or you know, people that were in math, or all, all kinds of different degrees were in this class, but not one person wanted to work with me. So I go up to the professor and I was like, I don't have a lab partner, is that okay? And he just looked at me. He's like, well, if you don't have a lab partner, you have to do the experiment on your own, the entire write-up on your own, and you don't have anybody to check your work, or to question uh, your theory, or if you're doing it right. And he's all the lab instructions, you have them all. And he said, you just have to be able to handle it. And he said, I can't force anybody to work with you. And I was like, okay, it's all right, I've got this. You know, I, I, I clawed my way into the class. I wasn't gonna let a lab partner kick me out of the class. So I sat there and I was like, all right, I got this, I got this, I got this. So I did the entire experiment. Honestly, I don't even remember really what it was. I don't think this was the alum experiment, but it might have been. It's where you extract alum from aluminum cans by just certain processes, chemicals and uh, whatnot. But I remember finishing my lab and telling the teacher that I'd finished my lab and asking what I should do next, because this was my first very, very, very intense college lab. And he's like, well, if you're done, you can work on your write-up. And I said, okay, how long does the write-up needs to be? And, and he said, well, if you don't have a lab partner, it just needs to be a two-page write-up with diagrams, your experiment, your results, that kind of thing. I said, okay. So I started writing out my lab. And granted, he said they all have to be handwritten labs. These cannot be typed. You cannot put them into a computer, nothing like that. Your original handwritten lab from each student. And it has to be legible. I was like, not a problem. So I got through with that and I went to the teacher. I said, I'm finished with my lab write-up. He's all, do you want to turn it in? And I said, well, I have to turn it in now. He's all, well, you can either turn it in now or you can wait until uh, our next lab, which was uh, two days away, and then you could turn it in then. And I said, I don't think it's going to change, so here you go. And so he looks through it and he's all, mm, mm. And he just gave me this blank stare and he's all, good job. He's all, you can go. I said, is that it? Do I get a grade? He's all, you'll have a grade return to you next time. I said, oh, okay. So I left and I smiled and waved at everybody and I was leaving the class 30 minutes early and it was a three hour lab. People were still intensely working on their projects. And I'm like, oh, I, 
I hope I didn't mess up. I finished early. I came back to the next lab and somebody walked up to me and he was a bigger guy, nice person. He was a math major and he's like, listen, he's all, I'm sorry. I prejudged you when you came into the class. He said, but the professor said right after you left, he pointed at the door and said, that student wants to be a scientist. That student is going to make it. And shame on all of you for not allowing her to join. Uh, and shame on all of you for not allowing her to join up to be a lab partner on your table. And that's what this other student said to me. And he's all, if you don't have a lab partner, he's all, I would be happy to be your lab partner. And I said, well, why do you want to join me now? Because I was the first person to leave the class. Like, I, I had an attitude all of a sudden, like, huh, now you want to join? Or now you want me to join with you when before you didn't care anything about me? And he said, yeah, and I'm sorry. He said, I prejudged you. He's all, I just thought you were some pretty bimbo that was in the class for a, an easy credit to join onto somebody's lab group. And it, from that point on, I can't tell you how many times that I have been called just some pretty bimbo that doesn't know anything. So to everybody out there that has stories like this, that has been told you can't do it, or that you're not smart because you're pretty, or yeah, somebody like you could never do this, don't let anybody ever tell you that. Whatever you put your mind to, whatever you want to do, you can do it. And that's what's driven me to be a geologist. There, I've always had this drive in me to do everything that I've wanted to do and achieve. And I have this huge passion for rocks and minerals and I love, love, love finding things. I love going out and touching something for the first time that maybe nobody has ever touched before and digging that mineral out of the ground. And of course some of them I take home, some of them I just leave in the field. You never know. But I've never let anybody tell me that I can't do anything. Sure, they can say that to me, but I've never allowed that to affect the way I feel about moving forward to do something that I love. And I answered most all of those questions I had as my seven and eight year old self wanting to know what an agate was. And through science, scientific theory, geology, geology theory, through everything that I have learned about the earth, I've been able to answer those questions. And it came with a lot of college and a lot of time studying and pounding the books. And sure, some of it nowadays, uh, people can just look up everywhere and see exactly what it is. But when I started out, yeah, you could get the information. Did you know it? Mm. You needed to read an entire book to sometimes understand the terminology that geologists use. But it's something that I'm very proud of. And I feel very, very blessed to be where I'm at and to have had the adventure that I have had in order to be a geologist. I hope that you guys learned something from that. I hope that it inspires you. And I hope that you go on and watch the other ladies through this collaboration for A Heart of Rocks and see their stories about either why they do what they do or whatever it may be. I encourage each one of you to go check it out. So thank you guys for joining this little mini adventure in this very odd story time video. <laughs> I know it's not my normal content, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.